All right, hello and welcome to the seventh section of chapter four. We're going to talk about transformations of polynomial functions. Uh, so some things we want to do is describe transform graphs of a cubic function, function. So we're going to focus just on cubic functions today. We want to find the x and y intercepts given the equation of a cubic function. We want to sketch a graph of a cubic function given an equation and then write an equation for a transformed uh, function. All right, so uh, what I want you to do is I want you to fill out this table. I have values for x, which to fill out the values of y. Uh, so y is equal to x cubed is the parent cubic function. It's the most basic cubic function. We talked about parent functions early on in the semester. So please fill out this table. You can pause here. All right, so I have this table here, and now I'm going to create a graph. So please create a graph on your own on the side. I'm going to pause here. You can pause here. Uh, so I have my graph set up. I'm going to plot the points that I have generated for my table. Now I'm going to create that uh, cubic function. So basic cubic function. We talked about this right uh, down up for a cubic function. And uh, we also talked about end behavior as well, increasing and decreasing. So if you recall those discussions. So we're going to talk about transforming a cubic function. Uh, so back again to a, a h and k, uh, so we have a horizontal translation, so f of x minus h, so x minus 5 cubed, goes 5 units to the right, uh, x cubed minus 2 is 2 units down, I have f of negative x cubed, that's a reflection over the y-axis, negative f of x is a uh, reflection over the x-axis, so negative is on uh, the outside <coughs> of the entire function. Uh, f of uh, a times x, 3x cubed, stretch by a factor of 1 over a. We discussed this factor. And a times f of x is a stretch vertically by a factor of a. This is a great sheet for you to have as you work through these problems. All right, so let's state the tra each transformation for the following equations from the parent function, horizontal shift, vertical shift, reflection, yes or no, over the x or y axis, stretch horizontal or vertical, and the factor. Uh, so I want you to try this on your own again because I'm going to give you the answers and again you're going to have classwork um, that represents this without the answers. So let's have you pause here, uh, see if you can write these down and then match your answers against what I provide to you uh, and go back and check your work. Okay, so I'm going to uh, give you the answers. All right, so I have a horizontal shift by four, vertical shift, I'm sorry, by three, vertical shift by four. There's no reflection either way. Horizontal stretch by uh, one half. All right. Uh, horizontal, uh, second one, horizontal shift of negative four, uh, vertical shift of negative one, reflection of the x axis, and a vertical stretch by two. I have a horizontal shift of negative two for the last one, vertical shift of negative four, reflection over the y axis, and no stretch. Okay, so let's uh, move on. Uh, this brings you to classwork uh, 4.7.1. All right, so same thing, stated transformation for the following equations from the parent function. Horizontal shift, vertical shift, reflection um, over the x or y axis, and uh, then and I'm going to place this value here inside of the parentheses. Uh, and then uh, uh, so what's the stretch, horizontal or vertical, and then the respective factor. Okay, so please answer these questions. Again, this is uh, your first uh, classwork set of problems. Okay, I'm going to move on. All right, second thing, we want to find the x and y intercepts given the equation of a cubic function. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. Uh, finding the x intercepts, so both x and y intercepts are coordinates, so please provide your answers as a coordinate. Uh, so we're going to set uh, uh, x equals to 0 to find the y intercept, uh, y equals 0 to find the x intercept. All right, so for the y intercept, I set x equal to 0. 0 minus 3 uh, cubed plus 1, negative 27 plus 1 is negative 26. X-intercept, uh, we're going to set y equal to 0, 
0 is equal to x minus 3 cubed plus 1. Negative 1 is equal to x minus 3 cubed. Now this gets into a little bit of a tricky situation for you because we haven't talked about cubed roots yet uh, fully. I'm going to give you simple problems. So cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Uh, so we take the cube root of negative 1, we get x minus 3, and then we add 1 to both sides. Uh, or I'm sorry, add 3 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 2. All right, so 2, 0 is your x-intercept. So that's how that works. So let's uh, find uh, state and find the x and y intercepts. So let's see if you can do this on your own. And I'm going to give you the answers. There's a lot of work, so I'm just going to show it to you. And you can pause the video and write down your work um, if you want to. <clears throat> but you should compare, go through this work, uh, pause here, do the work, and then compare your answers. So I'm going to give you your answers now. Uh, so in this case, we have to use a calculator to find the cube root of some value uh, for number two. Uh, you shouldn't have anything that's that complex for a test. Uh, and we can talk about this in class if you have questions about how to do number two. Uh, you're going to need a calculator. Okay. So this brings us to classwork 4.7.2. Uh, find the x and y intercepts for these... Uh, cubic functions, so please copy this down, and then I'm going to move on. Okay, so you want to sketch a graph of a cubic function given an equation. All right, so I have an equation, I have these three equations here. We create a table, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Another table, uh, and this is part of classwork for 4.7.3 and additional classwork for 4.7.3. <clears throat> so let's uh, focus on the first one, and then the uh, two and three are going to be additional classwork. So you want to create a table first, find the values for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we're going to do this together for number one. Your classwork is going to be number two, and then in class we'll do number three. Uh, so please uh, create the table and then graph uh, the cubic as you can or sketch it. So take a moment here and pause. Okay, so this is what I came up with, 5, 12, 4, 5, 3, 4, 2, 3, and 1, negative 4. We know it's a uh, of a positive uh, cubic as a parent function, and so it's going to be down up. So I'm going to start with this value here. I plot my points, and then I sketch a line. Here's the work on the side. Remember your PEMDAS. Okay, um, I'm going to move on. So uh, this now is classwork. Uh, so just to clarify and be more specific, this is classwork 4.7.3. And you're going to uh, graph, sketch a graph of these functions using this table and this equation. So generate a table and then sketch to remember how that cubic function looks when it's negative. Right, it's going to be uh, up, down. So please take a moment to copy down number two, and then I'm going to move on to our last topic. Okay, so now we want to write an equation for a transformed function. So write a rule for g, uh, the given function f of x, x cubed plus x squared plus 1, when g of x is equal to negative f of x. So let's see if you can do this on your own. And g of x is equal to 3 times f of x. So please take a moment, pause, write these down. Okay, I'm going to give you the answers here. And you should check, uh, make sure you're doing the work and then checking. Okay, so these are your answers. So the first one, negative f of x, all the terms change sign. That's g of x. Second one, 3 times f of x. I'm multiplying the entire function by 3. Uh, so this is what I get for g of x. Okay. All right, this brings us to, I believe, your last classwork problem. This is uh, the fourth classwork problem. And then we'll be done. Okay, so write a rule for g the given function. I have f of negative x and f of x plus 2. So please copy this down. And this does bring us to the end of class today. Uh, so that's your fourth classwork problem. Thanks for joining us in our discussion about transformations of polynomial functions. Uh, we'll see you next time uh, with our last discussion about polynomials. 
chapter 4.8.